Hello everyone, Mr. Bowtie here. Let's talk about spreadsheets, specifically Google Sheets. So here is a sample Google Sheet that maybe I collect some fake data from a Google form or just manually entered some things in, that works. So the first thing I like to do is if I were to highlight my, my header row, kind of separate it, I can make that font size just a little bit bigger. I can make it bold. So you'll notice at the very top of your sheet, um, there are the same or very similar icons to what you'd see like in a, a Google Doc or a Word Doc. Um, next thing I like to do is um, clean up the bottom. So there's, if I know that there's no more entries or no more rows needed, because um, in a spreadsheet, if I were to click and grab down, you see there's like thousands rows before uh, it ends. And I don't need that if I'm going to go up and down, if I'm going to scroll a little bit. So one of my little tricks is click on a row. Say, hey, if I need a few extra rows, great, but click on a row, there's row 40, and hold down the control shift and down arrow will highlight all those rows for me. Then I can right click and press the delete button. There we go, because now if I want to scroll up and down, look at that, super nice and easy. Um, that's not something you can do in Excel. Excel keeps putting things in. Google Sheets, you can delete the rows, and make it tidy it up, it looks awesome. Um, next, you notice that my columns need to be resized. So if I come in right in between column A and column B, right on that line, you'll notice that now you'll see kind of those two black lines, arrows pointing out. If I were to click and hold down, I can drag and move that, um, that column and resize it. But I'll say, oops, I went a little too far. Shoot, here's a second way you can do it, right? I can make it bigger. I can get in between those two columns, click and hold down, drag to the right. Oh no, it's too big now. How do I fix that? Here's an easy trick to do. I can get right in between. And instead of clicking and dragging, just give it a quick double click. Click, click, boom. And it auto sizes to um, to reshape that that column. So here's what I'm going to do. Can I do more than one column? Absolutely. Get in between, right? Hide all the columns that I want, get in between the column, there we go, and double click. And you'll see it's auto sized to the biggest um, amount um, in that row, that cell. Um, next thing I love to do, you notice that if I scroll down, my header row is gone, and that's kind of annoying sometimes. So I'm gonna come up in between um, row one and this little gray rectangle box kind of a thing. There is a bolded, a little bit of gray line right there. There we go. Get the, a little white glove on top, click and hold down. We'll close it and I can drag down to where I want to freeze that row. Um, there we go, right behind between one and two. There it is, so row one is now frozen. If I were to scroll down, notice that my header row um, is still there, which is great. I can do the same thing if I want to go from columns, just grab that little bolded line and bring it over. So now I have first name, last name. So if I were to move over to my right, then again, you'll notice that, hey, it's really easy. I can see um, here's Bob's information. If I don't want the last name, I can just come right back over, find that glove, click and hold down and bring it back. So now I have just the first name will stay with me. There we go, pretty cool. All right, now let's move into text wrapping. Here's a couple of different ideas. You notice I didn't, for my notes, I didn't, uh, expand that, that column or resize it, right? That, that takes a lot of space, so let's undo that. Here's a couple other ways that we can do this. One, if I were to click on a cell and then come up to my text wrapping, I have three, three choices. One, just let it overflow like it is. Two, I can wrap it. Here's what it does. You'll see it wraps it around to the next part and it makes that row just a little bit bigger. The other option is just to clip it so it will stop and it will not overflow into the next cell. But I can still read it if I click on that cell. Boom, there it is. I can still see what's happening at the top. So same thing down here, if I don't like it, I can come over um, and say, text wrapping, and clip it, or maybe I want to wrap it like so. And if, if I want to, I can also do this. I'll back it up. If I were to highlight that entire row, and then come over and do some text wrapping, I can do it that way as well. Um, if you're using a Google form, I think the formatting will change once a form entry would happen. So you'd have to still go back and maybe update uh, this column if you wanted them all to 
uh, be clipped. Great. Next one, text rotation. So let's say maybe you have a lot of data on your spreadsheet, but I want to rotate these headers slightly so it makes them look kind of cool. Here's how we do that. Um, rotate our text. So we're going to come up to, well, first we're going to select our, you know, our header row. So let's get those on a nice angle maybe. Here's our text rotation button. Click it. And I can rotate it, tilt it up. I can tilt it down. I can do some other little funky things here. They have it go straight down. That might not be the best for this spreadsheet. Um, maybe having to go all the way up from the side. That could work, right? Because you now see our number of copies. Why would this be handy? Our number of copies, if I were to double click on it, it's going to shrink that down, make it look nice, right? T-shirt size, same thing. Boom. And now it looks a little bit uh, more condensed, a little bit put, more put together. So I kind of like that, actually. Um, or if I wanted to, I can come over and have it rotating up and notice that even though it's still rotating up, I can still shrink that, um, this column down if I wanted to. And it's realizing that, hey, drink, um, maybe I want to put that into the middle. There we go. Just move it over just a little bit and maybe treat too. That way it looks probably a little bit better. There we go. It kind of separates that t-shirt size and the drink. That looks great. Um, all right, now reading each one of these, if I were to scroll down and say, okay, I see a Dr. Pepper here, but really where is it? And we're dealing with a lot of data that can be a little bit confusing. So one of the things we can do is do alternating lines. So how do we do that? I'm going to select the area that I want to do alternating colors. I'm going to come up and hit the format and then come down to alternating colors. So it makes it look nice. By default, it turns it gray. Um, do you have a header row or not? Yep, we do. And then I can just simply choose one of these awesome colors that they have pre-made. Um, and notice that the every other line will now be colored for you. You can change the range up here at the top. Um, if you want to make your own custom color, so hey, I don't want this orange. Maybe I want uh, this blue. And then I want my different colors. Um, maybe go something a little bit darker. That's not bad. Um, it can go white, or if I want to change the color number one, I can easily color, change that color to whatever I want, or use the color dropper or the plus button to add in my own custom color, which is awesome. I'll leave it like that. Blue is great. Um, and now let's go through and do some sorting. So if I wanted to, like, hey, I've got this uh, first name, last name. I want to sort this by last name. So if I were to right click on my um, on my column and it says all right sort the sheet a to z that will easily trans right um, sort this by alphabetical um, a's first and at the bottom we have our c's um, that's nice and easy another way we could have done this I like to do is i have like to highlight all of my my data so i can this hover over it, right? hold down that, that mouse button and move over. That's one way. Or another pro tip would be if I'm right here in cell A1, I'm going to press again the control shift and the right arrow will be over. You see the little blue dot there now. And if I hold, continue holding the control shift and press the down arrow, move down to the next section um, or where there is a space, that will stop right there. Um, there we go. All my data is now highlighted. I can come up to data sort range, and I can sort it by column A, A to Z, or Z to A. But here's the advanced range uh, sorting options. And yes, I do have my header row selected, so it makes it easier for me to sort. How do I want to sort this? Um, let's go last name. And then if I want to add another column to sort, I can do sort another column. And someone do first name, A to Z, that was great. Because now when I come back up, now you have Hermione and Scooby um, as we go through and say both have Anderson, there it is. If I were to go back and say just right click on B and sort it A to Z, notice that Scooby will be on the top and Hermione will be in row three uh, because it wasn't sorting by last name and then first name. It just did last name first and it didn't care about anything else. But I don't like that. I don't like it that way personally. And so I have to come over and uh, highlight my data. There we go. Pull it down again. Come to data, sort range, advanced range 
sorting. I do have my header row selected. So I'm going to go last name first, A to Z. And then I'm going to change this up and go first name. Great. If I want to do something else, I can also do by t-shirt size, whatever I want to filter by or sort by. And hit, oh, I don't need that one. I'll hit the trash it. Just by last name, first name. Boom. Awesome. So now, now we have Hermione, right? Because H comes before S, even though they have the same last name. Anderson to the top. Hermione will come now before uh, Scooby. Cool. And the last thing that we're going to do is maybe um, a little conditional formatting. This is a really fun function um, and gets a little bit geekier, but I love it. So let's say here in column C, my t-shirt sizes, I'm going to hide that first uh, bit of data, the L and wrote C2, hold down the control shift, press the down arrow. Um, and now I've come down to the bottom. But if I want to highlight these other uh, cells as well, I can again, control shift down arrow, type the entire C2. Next, I'm going to come up to format and conditional formatting. So you see my range C2 to C39 is up. Perfect. And it says if the cell is not empty, turn green. But let's say I want to, um, if text is exactly a large, let's say if it's a large, then I want it to turn a certain color. Um, let's do this green. That looks good for now. Great. Um, and then I can add another rule. Or if I have it open, this is a cool one. If I hit add another rule, then the range will still be applied and my format rules will also be there. So now I can say, hey, um, let's go Excel and change that color to maybe something different, a little bit yellow. Great. But if I just hit done and so come up and say add another rule, um, there it is, right? My format cells, again, goes back to the is not empty. Um, the range is still there, but the format rules has changed back. So I'm going to come back and say is exactly. And this time let's uh, choose medium. How about that? Oh, let's do orange. That'd be kind of cool. I can do more than say, if that's a kind of a darker background, I can come down and change the text color. Maybe I want that to be white. How will that look? Not bad, right? I can bold it if I want to, or do some of my little features or change the fill color. And let's do one more. We gotta get a small one here. So now if I just type in an S, it's exactly an S. Um, I'm just going to make this one up. Let's do, uh, ooh, pink. Sure. Right, and it has that, because I, I used that additional rule, uh, my background is still, or my text color is white. How about we choose black? Um, either way, maybe the white could have looked pretty good too. Let's check that out one more time. Yeah, I think I like the white better. All right, hit done. So now, anytime, right, I come through, if, if I were to add an L, it'll change color. If I add an XL, Changes color. If I had an S or an M, boom, they will all change color as I'm manually entering these in. Awesome. So there you go. That is the first part of the basics for Google Spreadsheets. Thank you so much for joining. When you're done, you're done.